Hi, I'm uh, Christoph von Tommer, <laughs> and um, uh, I'm going to talk to you today about products and about how to build them in the right way. And the right way, I think, is in an agile way. Um, I think a lot of you probably are doing projects for customers in an agile way, um, but maybe you should be thinking about running your products also in an agile way. Not just the development, but everything, like everything. And that's what this presentation is going to be about. Um, is it scannable now? <laughs> I've been moving it a bit. So if you, just as a uh, small uh, clarification, throughout my slides, you're going to see barcodes. Um, basically what I've been um, playing with, and this is also one of my minimal viable products uh, experiments, is to see if people will use barcodes during presentations, if they can scan them. Um, so the barcode that you see here, if you scan it, it will send you to Twitter to go and retweet whatever I wrote there. Um, the other barcodes throughout the presentation will send you to uh, a little website, which is like um, something where we've got some of the materials uh, from this presentation. Um, I think you can go and comment and uh, on individual slides. So it's couple of experiments that we're running. Um, about me, I'm uh, Christoph van Tommer. I'm the uh, CEO and uh, co-founder of Pronovix. That's a Belgian Hungarian company. So I'm, I'm the, like I used to say, I'm the Belgian, fr uh, I'm the H Belgian from Hungary, but now I'm the Belgian from Hungary who is again living in Belgium. And if that doesn't totally blow your mind, I'm a bioengineer, <laughs> so um, I've, I've been bringing a bit of a different perspective to the Drupal world, I think. So that's also one of the reasons why um, I'm very active in or event organization. So I, I don't write much code, actually I don't write code, um, but I try to overcompensate doing all kinds of other stuff. So I'm part of the Drupal Association. And I don't know if you know this guy. Anybody recognizes him? He's, um, he's actually, he's quite a famous uh, investor. Well, actually his partner is really famous. Um, uh, but this guy is really interesting because he, he, he's been saying some very interesting stuff about mental models. Uh, mental models meaning um, simple stories or simple simplifications of a certain uh, idea or concept that can help you to think differently about your realities, right? So, and, and one of the things that he's saying is, um, so there's, if you, if you go to that uh, bit.ly, um, you'll find a report, well, there's, there's a couple of articles out there, where in which he's talk, well, in which they interviewed him and where, uh, where he's talking about some of the mental models he's using to do his investments. Very interesting stuff. He gets, uh, uh, quite some of his models come from biology also. Um, well, that's maybe that's partially my bias because I see like, who somebody finally who's also talking about uh, environmental and, and like ecosystems and, and thinking about that in business and like kind of legitimizing it because people used to do that in the past, but then it became a bit of a no-no. But I think there's a lot of stuff you can learn by looking at ecosystems and biological systems um, and like reapplying it. They, they help you think in a different way. And um, with my background, there's quite some of that stuff in this presentations today. So what's the problem? Homegrown CMSs, like I, I think a lot of the people here in this room started out building their own little CMS in PHP, like long time ago, they thought it was brilliant. And, <clears throat> and, um, and then, you know, hits, the issues of maintain maintainability and uh, scalability and all that other stuff, um, and uh, and then and then started looking for something else, and then probably that's how you ended up with Drupal. Um, but homegrown CMSs are a lot like sandcastles. Uh, they're they're it's fun to build them, but they break down really easy. Like one wave comes and they're all gone, um, and you know it's they just keep crumbling down, and it's 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 a lot of hard work. And um, and then 
if you if you look at what has happened with Drupal, Drupal has come in and basically been well some people will say this is too harsh but i think actually drupal has been quite a disruptive force in this landscape uh, because basically what 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 i've seen seen happening around me is that all these people that had their own little cmss um, suddenly their customers started asking for drupal specifically like okay we don't really want your stuff but or well they didn't say that but could you build this in drupal uh, and I, I hear this now coming up more and more. So basically what's going on is that um, this wave of, of, um, of open source CMSs, including Drupal, is coming in and, and is like a tsunami. And, and that's a really powerful image now, especially after what happened in Japan. But it's coming in as a tsunami and it's basically um, leveling the playing ground and um, maybe not destroying, but at least removing a lot of the value of these custom CMSs. And that's a lot of diversity that is being lost. It's like an extinction level event. It's like us humans doing this stuff to the planet, like destroying a lot of species. It's not necessarily a bad thing, <laughs> but it's something to think about. There's a lot of value that was um, in there, in, in that diversity, to some extent, right? Because Drupal has brings a lot of different value um, but there's a lot of value that, that has been leveled. And there, there's a new level playing ground that is being created. And now, my next step is, but if you look at Drupal, and if you're like um, a pure Drupal shop, like doing only, like, well, doing basically anything people ask you to do in Drupal, like without trying to diversify, just being the random Drupal shop doing all kinds of brochure sites, all kinds of different sites, not really picky about what you do. Uh, you're still building sandcastles. They're really pretty. They're really beautiful. They're really big. Um, they're really robust. They're going to stand way longer than all the stuff that these custom CMSs were doing, but they're still sandcastles because um, like you're, you're, still, you're still vulnerable. That's what I want to say. Because after the, the, the disruption wave has gone, after this big tsunami of open source has really leveled the playing field, after everybody will be doing Drupal or some other open, C open source CMS, um, we as small shops, because I think most of the people here are small Drupal shops, um, will be competing with the elephants. And once it's a playing level, once it's been leveled, the playing field, it's easy for the elephants to come in. And that's what's happening now, actually. So now building the tension, <laughs> building drama. Luckily, we've got this guy, Drupal Bug or, or Drupal Roach. Uh, Dries introduced him. Um, it's a little fellow. He's like unkillable. Um, he's a bit of a eat everything. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll take any project and build you a website for it. Um, he's a bit of a bottom feeder, I would say. Um, and he's hard to kill, but not necessarily relevant. So meaning um, it's, it's so diverse and so adaptable, like he can, he can be in any kind of ecosystem, but he's not necessarily the, you know, the shiny bird in that ecosystem. But if you look at insects, and here come the mental models, if you look at in insects, they're... Um, They've got this, this really cool building model because insects, like they're everywhere, like really literally everywhere. There's, there's a couple of niches like the sea that they had a bit of harder time getting into. But else, if you look around, you'll see insects everywhere. And the reason for that is they're built on a really modular building, building model. So if you look at them, they've got wings, they got paws, they got this mouthpiece, and they can really easily adapt these and reconfigure it to adapt themselves to a new ecosystem. And Drupal is a lot like that. It's got a lot of these little module, modular bits and pieces that are um, that can easily be repurposed and further enhanced um, to fit a specific niche. So we're, we're good at adapting to different niches. But if you want to be successful in a niche, you have to go all the way. You have to really adapt. You have to diversify. You have to become a different kind of bug. Not just a roach, not just a Drupal roach, 
um, and, and that's not meant to, um, to any user on Drupal.org or anything like that. <laughs> um, but uh, meaning like you, you, have to, you have to adapt yourself to specific feeding habits. Uh, you have to become, I don't know, specialist in church websites. We've got a couple of those. Um, you have to be specialized in SEO or, or something. You have to get away from just being just another Drupal shops uh, because there are so many out there already and, there, and more and more are coming. If you want to be something special, if you want to be really success, uh, successful, you have to adapt, you have to change, you have to be specially uh, adapted to certain environment. Because, but, and again, um, <coughs> even a nice niche is again still a little wave. So it has all the same dynamics of, of the, the open source waves. So like if you're building, uh, if you're building um, uh, distributions, like Drupal distributions, that's probably not a very good way of doing this because what you're doing is you're creating another open source product that will do the same thing to that very specific niche, uh, like be the, the wave of change that uh, destroys some value from some competitors and builds value for the Drupal ecosystem. But it's again a level playing field. Everybody can play there. Once you've built the distribution, anybody can take it and run with it and do the awesome stuff that you wanted to do. So you need something more than just a distribution. You need a business model. You need a sustainable business model. Who knows this graph? Yeah, some few people. Okay. This is um, the business model canvas. It's awesome. It's just plain awesome. <laughs> um, because it, it's, it's a really good tool. It's a really good model to help you think about your business. Uh, like it asks, it's not like, you know, writing a business plan. Business plans are so passé. Nobody, like, you don't want to go and write a business plan. Because business plans, yeah, nobody really believes in that anyway anymore. Um, a business model, though, is uh, a tool, not so much as a communication tool, it's a thinking tool. It's like I use mind maps all the time, and I realize that some, some sort of creative thinking I can't do without mind maps. Like, I'm more efficient if I use it. This tool is like that. This tool will help you think in creative ways about your business because it asks the right kind of questions. It, it, um, it has these different areas, key partners. I, I won't go in detail here, um, but if you like go and search it on the web, you'll find a lot of stuff about it. There's even a really good book about it. I'll show you that in a minute. And um, if you're building a business, you should be looking at this. Now, I said that it's a tool to help you think. What I mean with that is that you should not just fill this out and then put it in a closet like what you would do with a business plan and like never look back at it until maybe next year or in two years and then come back. You should be using it as an active document. Like every week you look back at it and you fill in the stuff that you've learned about your products, about your customers, and you do a new, new iteration and you keep updating it to, to make it like um, adapted to your current understanding of your business. So it's like a, a really good brainstorming tool to help you think about where you're heading, uh, how you're doing, and what, what kind of business you would be able to build. The URL that's there, that's a, a Google Doc that I made from it. So you can just, if you, if you take that, it's a, it's a template, you can just, it's open, just make a clone, make that one private, <laughs> And, um, and you can use it with your colleagues who might not be in the same location as you. This is the book that I was talking about. It's really useful because it, it's, it kind of explains how you can use the business model uh, canvas. Um, it was interesting for me that you, can, you can't get it in a digital format, but once you buy it, you'll see that it has all these nice pictures. You don't want that in digital format. Um, Now let's let's go back a bit to lean startups. So you've seen this business model. I was I was hinting at it that uh, you could use that to like reiterate and to like build further on um, on your your understanding of your business. Well, what what I'm hinting at there is that is the concept of a lean startup and what is agile, lean, all this stuff. It's all about learning. Everything like everything that lean is 
It's basically, it's a way to get faster feedback, to evolve faster, to learn faster from, from a changing environment fra with um, incomplete information about your customers, about your business model, about your market, product, whatever, and to basically adapt to that information on, on a lean way. That's, that's for me, that's what is agile. And there's this whole movement going on right now. And if you didn't know about it yet, you should really go and start reading about it because there's a lot of interesting stuff there um, about lean startups and how you can, you can use this kind of methodology to, instead of trying to build a product and start today and then in half a year, finish it and then find out that your customer actually doesn't want it, build a minimal viable product today something small, something prototype, go to the customer, get feedback, do a new iteration, new iteration, new iteration. That's the basic concept. And I think we as a Drupal community have been, or well, I claim guilty. Uh, we've, been, we've been pretty bad at that. Mm -hmm. Because what, what, what we traditionally, well, in the beginning, what, what we would do would be like, oh, we've got this cool idea, we're just going to like, spend a couple of months programming and then go to people and then, oh no, it doesn't work. Or, or yeah, this is actually cool. It's really cool technology. Um, and thank you, thank you for developing this. Bye. <laughs> um, like basically to be able to learn if there's actually a business in the ideas that you have. And, and to be able to do that, you really have to go with a lean kind of methodology. And the first way to do that is to get out of the building. You can't, you can't learn about your customers by just sitting behind your desk brainstorming. You have, you, like, you might think that you are omnisentient and you know everything about a certain segment or a certain product. It's not true. Forget it. You have to go out. You have to talk with people because they're going to ask you really weird questions and give you new ideas that will so totally change your understanding of your problem space that it will have an enormous influence on what you're building. If you don't do that, you're, you're going to be caught out because this is, the new, this is the new standard. Like this is what most tech startups or this is what the new wave of tech startups are doing. They're all going out doing this agile, lean kind of methodology and actually learning from the customers. They're doing customer development. Um, so they're, they're developing their understanding of their customers. And that's a really good book about that. <laughs> um, well, basically, this is a short version, and this one is, was digitally available, so I could get it on the Kindle store. Um, but actually, the, the, the book that they're getting most of their information from is uh, Four Steps to Epiphany. Uh, I don't know if you've read that, but... That's really good stuff. But if you want it for the flight back home, you can just get this one on, on the Kindle store. What's a minimal viable product? I already slightly touched on that. This is a Trabant. And in my company, we've got the saying, what would a Trabi version be like? Uh, or in, if you, if, I don't know if there's Hungarians in the room. No? Like there's a Fapadosh. That's um, a Hungarian word. They use it for um, low-cost airlines, and it actually means wooden benches. <laughs> so, like, what would be the Fapodosh way of building the first product? So, instead of trying to put all the features you think you could put in the thing, try to focus on your first build and, and the next, the consecutive builds. Try to focus on what is the minimal thing. Like, what is like, what can I build today? What can I get out today? Put it online and get feedback from customers. It's not going to be your final product. Everybody knows that, right? It's not going to be having all the whistles and bells. It's going to be something really small. It might even be just a survey. It might be just a registration form. But you can do that today. If you're thinking about building a product tonight, you can have a minimal viable product. Or tomorrow, or well, you know, it's, it's a bit busy on DrupalCon. <laughs> But the basic message is this, you, you should not, don't ever try to build your final product from day one. Like I've said this a couple of times, I'll repeat it a couple of times, 
don't make that mistake. There's a lot of people that have done that. Don't make it. Um, because you're, you're going to waste a lot of efforts and you're going to build something that nobody wants. Because the thing that people want is not what you think they want. It's something probably a little bit different. Now here we come back to Drupal. Because Drupal is really good at minimal viable products. Like I've heard so many stories of people that went out and say like, yeah, I was talking, um, I was talking with this developer company and they were going to make me my project for like, I don't know how many thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. And then I started looking at Drupal and I started like dropping in a couple of modules and you know, two days later I had like this thing and it's doing like almost everything that I wanted to do. And it didn't cost me a dime. <laughs> um, well, except for the time, of course. So Drupal is really good at building minimal viable products because it got all this stuff that, like, even if, if you can't, like, even if you're doing something that's not web technology, you could build quite a lot of minimal viable products using Drupal because you got web forums, you got registration, um, you, you can get feedback, you can get um, information from your customers. Uh, and then if you're doing a tech startup, there's a bunch of modules that will give you a lot of specific functionality that you can actually go and, and, and build the actual product with. But even that will probably be not too expensive. The trap there, again, is if you're a developer, you're going to say, oh, I'm going to make this module. <laughs> right? Don't, don't go and try to build your own module or un unless you really know what you're doing and it's like you know that it's going to cost you a day or two, try to use the existing stuff first and, and, and move on from there. Another really good minimal viable product builder is Drupal Gardens. If you're, if you're well, everybody here are Drupalistas, so you could run it yourself. But like if you need quick feedback, this is really easy. And it's really inexpensive and it's just click, click and, you know, you don't even have to go and mess with modules. Um, so that's something to think about. Another key term in agile startups is pivots. You know, in basketball, you can pivot where you keep one foot on the ground and you can turn around. You've seen that. Um, now, in, in Lean Startups, that means that you can, you can take everything you've learned before and change in the direction where you think you've got the best market potential. So instead of, instead of like, like dropping everything, so you're not changing business, you're making a pivot. You're, you're taking, you, you've learned a bunch of stuff from your minimal viable products, like in you know, a couple of iterations, a couple of weeks, you've learned a whole lot of stuff. Most likely, when you have a new idea, you will not end up building that idea. If you would have, if you would have just, just gone build it, you would have ended up building that idea. But it wouldn't have been the right thing. Because when you start doing this, um, this, this customer development, you'll find out that people actually want different things. And, and you'll be able, or you, you'll find out that there's no money in a certain thing. Like, um, like for example, what... Um, You've see, everybody should have gotten one of these on their chair. You can get these at the Microsoft boot. This is one of our minimal viable products that we've built. Basically, what we thought was, wouldn't it be cool if you could make a QR code that you can assign on the spot? So you got a booklet of these things in your pocket and you just pull out one, stick it on something. And, and we thought, like, oh, this is going to be great. It's like big consumer market. We're going to... you know, be the next, well, I don't know, localized Twitter kind of thing or something, or something digital, will, will be lots of fun. Then we started really thinking about it, getting feedback from people, build a, a first prototype, and we started realizing that this is not gonna work. We're, we're first of all, um, the, the, um, there's, a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of legal uh, difficulties because you're the responsible uh, publisher, so you don't want to go and create booklets, random booklets that you just, people can print out themselves and like put on stuff <laughs> and, and then they come after you <laughs> because you, you know, it's pointing to your website. Um, so we, we started like, we made a pivot and, and then we came up with this, which is a merchandise. 
So build merchandise that has a unique barcode. So that every sticker that you've got here is unique. So you when you scan it, um, you get to an assign page, you can say where it should redirect, you save it. Next time somebody scans it, they're redirected to that page. Um, and they're themed in the DrupalCon theme. <laughs> so we tried this, we're, we're looking at it. But now what we've learned doing this, like in a, in a small way, not to like, ooh, we go all the way, is learned that actually we're probably not the right company to, to do this one then, because this one requires a lot of sales. So we learned a lot of stuff along the way. And it was lots of fun, of course. <laughs> Um, but um, but what I want to say is like being able to make pivots and and figure out like l um, take your whatever you learned and then act on that is really important. So those were like the basic concepts of of lean startups. Now I want to spend a little bit of time on on this thing. I don't know. Has anybody read this the startup genome project? How many people, hands? Okay, that's great, lots of new. So there's these guys and they started doing like real scientific research or like real statistic research in um, what makes a startup successful. There's so many startups, tech startups now popping up that it, become, it becomes quite easy to do that actually. And what they've done they set up a questionnaire looking at how much funding your company had, what kind of growth phases you went through, um, what kind of founders you have. Um, and, and basically, they, they make a model and they then try to group these different types of startups uh, in, in a statistical way. And um, they made a report, and the report is available online. Um, if you, oh, I didn't put a URL. Well, if you look for a startup genome project, you'll find it. Um, it's really, really, really useful. I learned a ton from it. Like this thing. What kind of startup are you? Are you more technical or more businessy? Well, this slide is slightly off today because of the news, um, <laughs> but I didn't foresee that. <laughs> um, but if you, if you look at these two people, like this is, he's an uber geek, <laughs> right? Um, Steve Jobs is still fairly geeky, but he's quite a bit more businessy. Um, I, I took these people because they're like probably some of the biggest icons in, in tech world today. But what I, what I want to show with that is um, look at yourself, look at your founder team. Like, who are you? Are you technical? Most likely, because you're in DrupalCon, probably you're technical. Or are you businessy? Do you have somebody who's really like good at sales and, and all that stuff? Because that will have a significant impact on the type of business that you'll be able to successfully build. You can't just, you know, not anybody can do any type of company. And that's like some of the r most interesting information that I got out of this report. I'll come to the, the types now. Um, so first of all, uh, like I'm going to talk about four types of startups. Um, and um, slightly dissect them, and what what kind of makes them special, and um, and what and like what kind of team is is able to do them. So first, the optimizer. This is good for people like us. It's uh, highly technical. Basically, you take something that um, that's hard to do, that's technically hard to do, like. Um, um, I'll, I'll give a couple of examples soon uh, after this slide, um, and you you build a you build a website that will automatically do that. That's the um, that's the optimizer type of business, and and what's interesting there is that you don't need salespeople for this kind of tool. They're self-selling. You put them online, you have to get to some some little bit of virality, but in the end they'll carry themselves. You don't have to talk with customers. You don't have to go and visit customers and all that stuff. Uh, it's not necessary. And that's the kind of thing, if you're very technical, you probably want to do one of these. These are a couple of examples. There's some really big names here, but if you look at them, if you analyze them, they're actually optimizers. Because like um, like SlideShare, um, the publishing of, of um, 
presentations that used to be pretty hard before SlideShare, like doing that in a nice way. So they optimized that. That's the kind of business that's, that, um, that's one of the key businesses that we are good at as a community. Next one is uh, the social transformer. These are getting more interesting. These are things that um, work through network effects. Probably you need a little bit of business like uh, insights, but you probably with a technical team you can still get pretty far with this kind of um, this kind of web um, this kind of web startup. Um, like the the idea here is that this this is not like Dropbox you saw in the last uh, slide, because Dropbox worked from day one. You didn't have to have x amount of people already on the platform to make it interesting. So this type of startups needs x amount of people to make it interesting before they can start. And and um, these are really really interesting type of startups because they're they're the highest impact. They will change the world. And I think, well, that's might be your goal uh, to you know change the world or make an awesome product. I'll get back to that in a second. Um, some examples, you know these right? These are very visible. Everybody knows them, and they're they're big examples for a lot of a lot of uh, people. They want to build startups. Next type that they identified in the in the uh, startup genome project is the integrator, and this is also interesting. These are companies that take a technology like um, Facebook, and they build a platform for a small business for it. Um, so they they are like, but since they're working for small business, they need salespeople. They need internal salespeople, people that are not too expensive, so you don't have to go fly them around the world. Um, they sit in your office and they're talking with customers and like making um, SMEs feel comfortable with buying your product. So that's, but the, the caveat is that for this kind of business, you need business people, right? Because you need sales. Uh, it's not as hardcore as you know, people going door to door or, you know, going into companies, but it's already a bit harder. So for technical people, if you have a pure technical team, probably not such a good idea. These are a couple of examples. They're less visible, probably, you know, one or two. Um, but um, like if you see like DimDim, that's been bought by Salesforce. I think actually Salesforce should be on this slide also. Uh, it's also going after small and medium-sized uh, businesses. They also have internal sales for. As, um, they also have internal sales, so people that will answer the phone and call you up, like when you when you place an order or you log in, they call you up. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> so um, um, yeah, those are a couple of examples of that. And the fourth type, that's the challenger. These are interesting companies like um, because what they do is they take a technology and they they like run it all the way they go after the enterprise um, they're like Acrea right they they will take a technology and beef up their sales force and then go and sell it to those people that normally wouldn't buy it until somebody actually goes and talks with them and convinces them um, for this type of business, you really need somebody who does business. You really need a business founder, somebody who's done it before, um, who, who knows how to build up a, a sales force. Uh, because if you, don't, if you don't build up a sales force, you're not going to win this. Uh, you're not going to get far with this. These are businesses that's, that are like that. Uh, like Sun, MySQL, like they were, yeah, big time. Oracle, there's, there's a very clear fit. It might, uh, like Salesforce, well, they they've got both branches, I think. Uh, they got they also go after SMEs, but I guess I guess they also go uh, after big business. So those were the four types. Now, one thing that I didn't really talk about is what's your goal? What are you in for? What do you really want to reach with building a company? Do you want to earn a lot of money? Do you want to build an awesome product? Or do you want to change the world? You know, hook world alter. <laughs> um, and it's really important to think about this because, like, you, as a as a as an uh, as a founder, like I myself, I I felt this before that 
you can easily get caught in the you know the daily business of running your business and you know getting enough money in and and you know growing the business getting more customers running projects that you you easily can forget about what are you really doing this for and if you forget you're probably going you're not going to be all that happy or you're not going to be as happy as you could be or you're not going to get where you want to be if you're in for this for changing the world you're going to be able, you're going to be running different types of vis, uh, of businesses you're going to be uh, probably you're not going to be running an integrator right because integrators they're cool but it's been done before and targeting SMEs probably it's a good business but you know it's not going to change the world right so that's I'm going to change gear now so, so far, uh, I've been talking about uh, lean startups and kind of the basic concepts for that. Um, is, is everything clear so far? Everybody's still here. Nobody went dozing out. It's hangover day today, DrupalCon. <laughs> uh, so, the next thing I want to talk about is, is a bit about the future. Like, where are we going now? What, what are the possibilities? Um, how how do I see all this? Why is this room full, right? Because if if you well, it's almost full. Maybe there's some people upstairs still. Um, but why why are so many people looking to make products in Drupal? And and well, probably it's because you're thinking similar things as me, which is probably something like this. Probably you're not thinking this <laughs> though. <laughs> Who has heard before of the Cambrian explosion? Yeah. <laughs> few people for the other people um Cambrian explosion is a concept that came up as a theory um, um that was developed by geologists um because what, what they, they were looking at the fossil records um again by you know biology is seeping in back <laughs> we're going back to my roots and what they found this is this picture is just random right this is not the Cambrian layer it's just showing nice layers and it was uh, Creative Commons, that's why I took it. But, <laughs> um, but what what it it shows is layered stuff. And if you know a little bit about geology, I think every everybody knows that now from National Geographic and stuff. Uh, then you know that there's there's fossils in these in these regions. What well, what they found was that there was this one layer, uh, the Cambrian layer, where before there was like very little diversity, and then after that layer, it just suddenly boomed. Like there were so many different bit, uh, business models, building models, <laughs> so many different types of organisms that suddenly were created. And um, so, so and, and it's interesting to think about why did that happen? How come that suddenly from fairly boring ecosystems, you get to this whole diversity complex kind of thing? And that is basically because of evolutionary triggers. What are evolutionary triggers? They figured out, well, one of the, the, the main theory right now is that at the Cambrian age, there was so much oxygen in the atmosphere that suddenly there was enough food, there was enough resources to start doing really different things. Right? I think today we're in a similar period for, for the human race, or now we're talking really big. <laughs> um, but if, if you look at what's going on today, there's so many changes that have happened there's so many liberations like today you can build a startup on a shoestring budget and build it into a million dollar business it's possible a lot of people are doing it today um a lot of people fail obviously <laughs> but but um it's because of these three things it's open source because there's a lot of software that you get out of the box that does a lot of stuff already just out of the box it's cloud computing because you don't need to buy a whole server park and plan for becoming really big or going down miserably when you hit it big. Um, and you can just scale. You, you, your business runs well, great, no problem. Just you know, add a couple of instances and you, you're fine. There's nothing big deal about that anymore. And mobile, 
mobile is going to change everything. Well, it's already changing everything. I think most people here have smartphones. Like, imagine going back 20 years ago and telling people that you would have this thing in your pocket that's actually like a computer and it's connected to the internet and you can like, at the touch of a button, you can find anything. It's just insane. It's like, it's redefining business so much. Everything, not just IT, everything. It's touching everything. And these three things together mean that these tools, this technology is, is now available to anybody. Anybody can go and build a startup. It's not expensive. It's not hard. You just need an idea and, and some you know, persistence to go after it. And I believe there's, there's this giant big value explosion that's going on right now. A value like after leveling the playing field, you know, the playing field of all the, the I can do it Drupal shops that we could go and grab. And, and yeah, I, I think that's in this new Cambrian IT explosion. <laughs> um, I think there's, there's going to be a lot of new business models that will be built. And probably the business model canvas will be one of the tools that a lot of people will be using. Uh, this lean methodology, customer development, those are all the tools that will help you to be one of them, to be one of those. Conclusion. These are five things that if you're serious about building your own product, you should go and do. Uh, maybe not today, maybe not tonight, but in the next week at least. It's like, Read about these mental models. They will really help you to, to get the new understandings and insights. Get the business model canvas. Go and fill it out. If you've got a product idea, you need to do that. Three, read the Startup Genome Project report. It's awesome. There's, uh, there's a lot of work with it still, but there's a lot of knowledge in there that, that will help you better understand what you're doing. Uh, for me, at least it did. Figure out what kind of company you want to be. Do you want to be changing the world or earning a lot of cash? Or you know, do you want to be um, sailing in a huge yacht by the time you're a pensioner? Or are you rather going to take a risk and you know, build, build something that will change the world and that you can brag to your grandchildren about? Make a choice, pick, it, pick one. Uh, there's different options, but, um, but they have different paths. And five, start building minimal viable products, MVPs, today. Maybe that's something you could do today. Um, now, again, a change of tech. One other thing that I think is valuable is, uh, or that's an interesting evolution. I don't know yet if it's going to run. I don't know how it will work. But one of the things that in our ecosystem could be like a good platform to create a bunch of value, like a new marketplace, is this whole app store business thing. Now, I know a lot of people have very strong opinions about that and I agree with them. Um, but I think if we do it right and if we do it, if we don't let other people do it, like if we, if we, if we don't do it, somebody from outside our community will do it and they'll run with it. If we do it, we can do it in such a way that will actually strengthen our community and we'll create a new marketplace, a new platform on which a bunch of different business models can be built and a lot of different new businesses can be started. And my, my understanding of that would be that you would take the people that are building distributions, you take the people that want to build applications, you take the hosting companies, you put them all together under one umbrella and you help them make their own um, application store, app store. Maybe that could be a cooperative, you know, in our good, almost socialist <laughs> um, ideas. Um, it, it would be about business. It would be about mo earning money. Uh, it wouldn't be for free because we all have to live and write. We can do a lot of stuff for free. I do a lot of stuff for free. But at the end of the day, I've got a family to feed and you all have. And you can't, you can't live from free. Uh, free is great and it helps you, but it should not be your only focus. And then, um, and probably most of the bits that you produce should be on Drupal.org. And I think if we do this right, it could be something that can help 
grow our community and diversify. Because if you look at Drupal, it's like this giant fractal. The Drupal, no, Drupal itself, in, to some extent actually, but the Drupal community for sure. Uh, you know, everybody knows what's a fractal. So like you start it really small, grows, starts branching, grows, start branching. Like everywhere it keeps branching and growing and in a lot of different niches. That's really what we have to help. This is what we should do as Drupal shops, as Drupal um, business owners, as startups. Because if we, if we all do the same, we're going to end up in a zero sum game. We're all going to be competing for the same resources and you know have to fight with each other. And that's no fun. Let's diversify. There's plenty of, plenty of new resources and, and, and new opportunities out there that we can go after and, and uh, do in a more collaborative way. So bottom line is, don't be a bottom feeder. This is a fossil from a cockroach. They've been along for a very long time. They're probably going to be along for a very long time, but they're not all that sexy. And <laughs> they're not ruling the planet. Um, at the moment, we are. <laughs> it might change. But, um, but bottom line is, you should, you should try to diversify. Don't try to do what everybody else is already doing. Um, because it's not fun and it's probably a bad business. And with that, um, there's more barcodes. If you want to follow me on Twitter, if you want to hook up on LinkedIn, ping me. Um, or come first talk with me if you want to hook up on LinkedIn. And then we can, we can get connected. Uh, and if you like this presentation, definitely go and evaluate it. If you didn't like it, you might consider. Um, <laughs> But, um, but um, that's something that the organizer asked. I totally changed this slide because it, I use OpenOffice and I didn't want it to grok it. Um, um, but I think the QR code is more fun. So go and rate my session. And um, one more announcement. I'm thinking about creating uh, a Drupal product camp that probably be in Europe, probably in Ghent probably this fall. It's not sure yet. There's, um, there's a, a group on Drupal's, uh, a group so Drupal uh, for products. If you search for, I think, if you search for my name and product summits or something, you'll probably find it or ping me um, if you're interested. Um, what, what it would be, it would be probably an open space where a bunch of people with similar, that are also building companies come together and share experiences very agile. <laughs> and, um, and with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? Um, I'll first go with you. Uh, do you oh, yeah, just say and I'll repeat. Very interesting. Uh, what the question is, what do you think about the strategy of phase two? I think, well, they're doing it different. So first of all, they've got multiple distributions. Um, and I'm sure they're, well, I can't talk for them. I'm not phase two, but um, I'm sure that they should be able to use, to leverage those distributions to do something interesting. Uh, probably could be through something like an app store potentially. Um, but um, um, but that's <laughs> you should ask them. <laughs> but um, but I think the, the thing that they're they have to um, like, come up against is the, the general negative feeling against app stores, and the whole idea from the community. So so if you're if you want to build apps, if you want to be in that business, or if you want to build distributions, come to the uh, come to my meetup. Because we're going to talk about that there about amongst others. Um, I think first, Mixel. So the question was, if you show all the companies like uh, Oracle and stuff, where would you put IBM? Um, well, IBM is a bit older. Yeah, so they focus on service innovation. But if you look at them, um, I think in the bottom line, they're, they're really going out selling and they're really going, I think they're going pretty, pretty much after enterprise, I think. 
well that but they're they're so much beyond startup that probably they they've diversified in so many directions it's hard to say now but i would say that probably they're since they're going more for the enterprise market i would put them as a challenger rather back in the days for sure now in certain fields definitely also yeah, yeah integration and that kind of stuff yes yes i think so yeah thanks so yeah okay Yeah. So the, the question is, like, how are you going to get funding if you don't know where you're going? Well, the first phase, when you're doing your discovery, you don't need money. Like, you can do this really in your garage. Uh, you, you just do it on your own money. And, and, and that can be very little. It's like, depending on where you live, obviously, it's going to be less or more. <laughs> if you live in a cheaper area, you can, you can go pretty pretty long while on... on a uh, little money and you could be doing a lot of prototypes like that and then the moments that you come into validation like I didn't show the the different stages so you got discovery validation kind of cleanup and then scaling those are like the four phases that every startup should go through if you look at um, the discovery uh, you, you don't really need money for that so so what what you want to do is come to a point where um, you're ready for validation at least or you're already validating before you go and get money because then you have like a market fit probably you know even going to investors could be part of your minimal viable product that could be part of your strategy seeing if anybody wants to invest in the ideas if they don't want to invest probably yeah you're not going to make it work so you have to go and make a pivot so yeah um, sure, sure. Even even in discovery phase, you need to eat. But like, so what what can you do? Um, first of all, like what we are doing and several others are doing is um, build a service business, and you know, build that up and run your products in parallel. That's one. Two, get a job first, and save some cash. Live a bit nimble. And then stay living nimble until you have your <laughs> minimal viable product sorted out. You you really need very little money like that. If you live with your parents, it's really cheap. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that though. <laughs> but but um, you know that there's this like you're you're a business person. You're an entrepreneur. Well, there's a difference between business and entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit like the more things that are against you the better you work the more innovative you'll be if if money is like really biting you or like you're almost out of cash you'll get really creative <laughs> so so um and and it might even be good to have like a, a clear runway like okay i'm going to run out of cash by that month we have to move fast. Like tomorrow, I put out a minimal viable product, and I'll 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 get information now. Um, so so it it really helps you reshape your thinking because uh, there's there's really interesting things. There's there's been these uh, there's these agile meetups around the world. There's a few in London also, um, and um, what they see there, like uh, you should go and read Steve Blank's uh, blog. They're running, like, what they see, they, they run a class. And, and, like, sometimes they have this agile startup meetups where, like, uh, teams come together and in, like, two days, they're going to build a product. Two days, right? <laughs> and they see that some people, they're really good at this. They In, like, half a day, they got a minimal viable product. And they're already testing, like, you know, a couple of hours in the show. And then other people, they can't get anything done. They're still talking, still figuring out what they want to do. Um, so, so what uh, what that shows is that it's a lot about your mindset. It's about making that shift from I'm not building my final product. I'm building something that's going to help me learn. That's the most important thing that you have to do. You have to make that that shift. If you don't make that, you're going to keep you know running with running wheels. Yeah. 
Sorry? Steve Blank. Um, let's see. Um, I th I think I think it's like this blank. Let's see. I got him. Yeah, I think it's this one. He's pretty cool, and he's he's running. Um, he's actually I think at Stanford he's running a course, so you can get the slides. There's some crazy people that are making uh, a lawnmower robot in his course. <laughs> Very interesting reading. Um, so yeah, I think um, uh, yeah, th I think that's that's the core message. Just yeah. You you also had a question or announcement maybe? <laughs> I have a buff at, at half one where I'm going to show you guys possibly three techniques that will help you or could help you. And um, if you're also interested in going del diving a little bit deeper, then come to my buff. What's the title? Lean user experience. Techniques to do what? Techniques to do go a little bit further into customer discovery and customer development. More questions? No? Okay, then I would like to thank you again. <laughs> Thanks.